Oh, nice musical shot. Drop there as they were once bitten, twice shy. Yeah, if you get attacked by mosquitoes on one good trip, you'd be like, okay, I'm going to put on some off or whatever the next time around. Dr. Yvette Liu is here to talk to us about bug bites and what to do about them and when to get really concerned about them. Welcome. Thank you. And let's start right away with, I don't know the answer to this. Should we be spraying chemicals on ourselves, on our children? Is DEET a bad thing? Well, I mean, to a certain extent, bug bites are a part of life, right? You, you go outside, you go, you go into the outdoors, you're going to get bitten. However, there is some concern about um, certain insects which can carry diseases. Right. And also, bug bites are sort of annoying, right? Like, they itch for a long time, they can swell up, they can cause allergic reactions. So it depends on the situation. If you're in an area where there are going to be a lot of mosquitoes, you know you're going to get bitten, there's a high risk of disease, then you want to get some repellent. But if you're only outside for a little while, you can wear long sleeve clothing, loose fitted clothing, and maybe you can protect yourself. You don't need to use the repellent. Right, so on one hand, if you're going deep in the woods, and the other, if you're just going into your backyard to barbecue. Exactly, right. depends how many mosquitoes you have in your backyard. If you have a lot of standing water in your backyard, mm. then you have little mosquito breeding grounds all over your backyard. Right. You might have some more mosquitoes Not a good thing. there. What about the difference between a wasp bite and a bee sting? Okay, well, some, some insects can sting more than once. Like some wasps, they can sting more than once, whereas some bees, they just sting once and then they're gone. So if you've been stung by a wasp, you want to sort of get out of the area. Mm -hmm. If you're near a wasp nest, you want to get out because you can be stung again. Now, when do you know that a bee sting or a wasp sting is worthy of, let's go, either to emergency or call 911. So there's different levels. There's okay. small reactions, local reactions. There's bigger reactions, which are sort of seen as moderate. And then there's the emergency 911 reaction, which is we call anaphylaxis. Right. And that one is when you have a serious allergic reaction. You're going to have hives all over your body, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, confusion, right. throat swelling, facial swelling, neck swelling. That's when you want to give epinephrine and call 911. So that's a 911. If, the, yes. if trouble breathing comes into yes, play or vomiting, that's breathing, what it, yeah. But let's talk about that middle one with that sort of extra inflamed that you go, oh, I don't know. How long should you wait and assess? Are you taking a Benadryl right away or a Claritin or what have you, or some sort of anti-inflammatory antihistamine? That's a tricky one. If you have a fever, then you should probably go in. Okay. If it's increasing rapidly, like the redness is swelling up your arm rapidly, then you should go in and so see So you draw the line with pen? Yep, you can draw a line, a circle around it, and see how fast it's growing. If you're not sure, I usually just say to go in. Just err on the side of caution, because yeah. you can walk into emergency and they can assess it fairly quickly. Or right? your family doctor. Emergency, right. you might have to wait a long time. Gotcha. Um, now let's talk about ticks, because everybody's been talking about Lyme's disease, and we are in, you know, a wood, wooded environment, do we have yes. ticks that are capable of giving us Lyme disease in, say, Whistler? Ticks are in tall, grassy areas and in wooded areas. The incidence in British Columbia is about 0.5. It's less than 0.5 per 100,000 people. All right. So it's not that common, but it is around. Um, that's Lyme disease, that number that I just gave you. Right. Not all ticks have the bacteria that cause Lyme disease. Good to note. So if you see a tick on your body, you just brush it off? You want to get rid of ticks if they're on your body, but you want to get rid of them really carefully. So you have to use tweezers and you grasp right at the bottom near the skin and pull it straight out. You, oh, and we have a diagram here. So you want to grasp right near the bottom near the, near the head and pull straight out. You don't want to twist or jerk because you might break the tick in half and leave half the tick in your body. You don't want to grasp near the top because then you can squeeze the contents of the tick's stomach into your wound, oh. which can increase infection. Don't pour anything on it. No. Don't burn, try to burn it or... Right, because that was yeah. an old school sort of myth. Take a match and yeah. try and burn the tick off. Okay, no. Um, so that's finding it on your body. And what are we looking at in terms of a tick bite? Does it, does it look like a bullseye if it's Lyme's disease? That's, yeah, so if there is Lyme disease, then you get the sort of bullseye appearance, um, like, like a red rings. circle. Yes, yeah. yeah, sort of like that, like a red circle. Um, if you're not sure, go see your doctor. Sooner the better, because there are antibiotics that help yes. if, if administered soon enough. Yes, yes, if you treat it early, then you don't get the long-term problems of arthritis, fatigue. You can have nerve, nervous system problems. It's a, it's a brutal disease, honestly. Lyme disease, yeah. My stepmother uh, inflicted with it and didn't catch it early and has had no end of difficulties. For those who deal with that, uh, feeling for you, bccdc.ca for more BCCDC, information. BCCDC, yeah. Yes, and uh, a health link, bc.ca. Health link is an excellent website.
Dr. Vetlu, always here on the program with City Health. Thanks for being here. Thank